Get ready for more Quirk, the critically acclaimed CBS original Elsbeth is back for season two. CBS Thursday, October 17th, Carrie Preston returns as the unexpectedly brilliant attorney Elsbeth Tassioni, working with the NYPD to catch the city's most well-heeled murderers. Every week brings new mysteries and surprising new guest stars, from Nathan Lane to Vanessa Williams, but always the same Elsbeth. Don't miss a moment. Elsbeth is all new on CBS Thursday, October 17th at 10, 9 central, as part of CBS Premier Week, and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Now trending? Fall. And DSW's here with all the obsession-worthy shoe trends you need in your closet. Feeling fierce? DSW's got bold snake print boots and a retro sneaker with animal print details. Going for demure? Kitten heels are the eye-catching yet walkable heel all over your feed and all over DSW. From edgy moto boots to sweetly simple ballet flats, find the must-own shoe trends of the season right now at your DSW store or DSW.com. Everywhere you look, things are getting more expensive. So at Consumer Cellular, we're lowering the price for those 50 and up. Now you can get unlimited talk, text, and data for $30 a line when you buy two. That's just $60 a month for two unlimited lines. So if you're 50 and up, make the switch and save. Come on, you've earned this. Call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com today. Requires two lines of service, age validation, and credit approval. Subject to system and area limits, taxes, and other fees apply. Does money stress you out? Let FACET flip your financial chaos into clarity. Finding FACET immediately put us at ease. FACET's innovative approach to financial planning ensures your money works as hard as you do, enabling members to experience the joys of having your finances in order. And that makes us FACET for life now, I guess. <laughs> Visit FACET.com, F-A-C-E-T.com to learn more. This ad is sponsored by FACET. FACET Wealth is an SEC-registered investment advisor. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities, nor is it investment, legal, or tax advice. These testimonials are from current FACET members who are not compensated. All opinions are their own and not a guarantee of a similar outcome. Hello, from Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. October is the perfect time to delve into all things spooky. So this month, we're talking about the women who give us goosebumps. Some are real-life creators of spine-chilling works of fiction. Others are the subjects of frightening folklore. Either way, these scream queens are sure to give you a scare. Today we're talking about a woman who was stabbed, shot, hanged, poisoned, strangled, guillotined, stung by scorpions, eaten by pumas, and chopped up into 83 pieces, and then got up to take a bow. Please meet Paula Maxa. Long before there were true crime podcasts, there was a different way for audiences to satiate their appetite for gory, unsettling stories. At the turn of the 20th century, Parisians gathered in a tiny old chapel that housed the Grand Guignol Theater. There, they watched grisly horror stories based on real-life crimes unfold on stage. The Grand Guignol was founded in 1887 by a playwright who was interested in slice-of-life stories that portrayed working-class people forced into lives of crime. One of its early successes was an adaptation of a short story in which a French sex worker kills a German officer. Soon, under new ownership, the Grand Guignol turned its focus from slice of life to slice of death stories. The productions took inspiration from crime articles in the newspaper and adapted them for the stage. Serial killers escaped lunatics and mad scientists decapitated their victims, gouged out their eyeballs and fed them to panthers, bathed them in acid, you name it all for the entertainment of engrossed Parisians. One of the Grand Guignol's most prolific stars was Paula Maxa, better known by her onstage mononym, Maxa. Maxa was born in 1898 in Paris to well-off and old-fashioned parents. She had a happy childhood, growing up in the city's bohemian district, Montmartre. According to her memoirs, which have since been discredited as sensationalist or downright fabricated, Maxa's life took a turn one night when she was a teenager. Her boyfriend assaulted her, slashed her throat, and then killed himself. Maxa claims this event set the tone for the rest of her life. As Maxa tells it at age 16, she married a French count. But she quickly became bored with married life and left her husband to pursue acting. She got a gig starring in a 10-part crime series called Le Vampire, but that would be her first and last experience acting for the screen. 
Instead, Max had developed a taste for the stage. She soon found her way to the Grand Guignol. She bought a ticket for a showing of the show The Suicide Club and watched entranced as a prince infiltrated a secret society of men who wanted to kill themselves. Maxa landed a role as an understudy for a production called Laboratory of Hallucinations. In it, a brain surgeon exacts violent revenge on his wife's secret lover. One night, the actress cast in the role got sick, and Maxa finally had her first opportunity to perform on stage. She rapidly became a fan favorite amongst audiences. Night after night, Maxa took to the stage and died in extravagantly gruesome ways. Some estimate she died 10,000 times over the course of her career at Grand Guignol. Maxa was dubbed the Princess of Blood and the most murdered woman in the world. Actors like Maxa were told to make their scenes as realistic as possible. The more people in the audience who fainted, the more successful a scene was. The theater used inventive techniques to achieve this realism. With the help of special effects makeup and creative lighting, Maxa decomposed on stage. In a different show, an actor was wrapped in a long strip of elastoplast. As it unraveled, it looked like the actor was being skinned alive. And the theater used gooseberry jelly to replicate old congealed blood. Maxa would steal batches of it to make delicious tartines. But Maxa's life wasn't just fun theatrical shenanigans. She believed she was cursed. When she wasn't on stage pretending to be a victim of violence, Maxa was witnessing violence in her personal life. Men sent her fan mail detailing murder, sadism, and perverse thoughts. In her memoir, Maxa described several instances of getting involved with seemingly well-mannered men who turned out to be violent criminals. Maxa's career at the Grand Guignol ended in 1930, 13 years after it began. Some say she was forced out by the theater's new director. Others claim years of screaming had damaged Maxa's throat, and she could no longer perform up to standard. Maxa briefly opened up a theater of her own, and eventually returned to the Grand Guignol for a smattering of performances before the theater closed in 1962. In 1970, Maxa passed away. She was 71 years old. All month, we're talking about Scream Queens. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. Get ready for more Quirk. The critically acclaimed CBS original Elsbeth is back for season two. CBS Thursday, October 17th, Carrie Preston returns as the unexpectedly brilliant attorney Elsbeth Tassioni working with the NYPD to catch the city's most well-heeled murderers. Every week brings new mysteries and surprising new guest stars, from Nathan Lane to Vanessa Williams, but always the same Elsbeth. Don't miss a moment. Elsbeth is all new on CBS Thursday, October 17th at 10, 9 central, as part of CBS Premiere Week, and streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Hi, I'm Essie Cup, and I've spent my career interviewing people about politics, presidential elections, and some really tough breaking news. But now I need a break. I think you do too. So on my new podcast, Off the Cup, I'll still be interviewing people, usually famous and most likely my friends, but about life. You know, the stuff that consumes us when we're not consumed by politics. So come join me every Wednesday for some conversational self-care. Listen to Off the Cup on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your favorite shows.